So here are a few examples dealing with multiplication with radicals. So we might have a uh, product of, this is actually three different expressions, 6 times the square root of 3 times 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 6. So how are we going to deal with something like this? Well, we can take all the numerical factors and put them together. And we could rewrite this as 6 times 2 and then the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 6. And then 6 times 2 is 12, so you can rewrite that as 12. And then we could group these two together and say that's going to be the square root of 3 times 2. Remember, we had those properties. Uh, the product of the square root is the square root of the product times the square root of 6. And you can see that this is just going to be the square root of 6, so we could say this is going to be 12 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. But the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is just 36. I'm sorry, the square root of 36, which is 6. So that's the same thing as 12 times 6, and that equals 72. So you see how that simplifies out. Uh, you might see something like this. This is another example. What happens if you saw something like Well, we can actually raise both of these, and we did have a, a property. I don't think I maybe went over all these properties, but if we've got the square root of, well, if we've got, well, this is actually a, a exponent property, so we probably saw this before. If we have a times b to the x, that's the same thing as a to the x times b to the x. So if you have a problem like this, you could actually raise both these to the fourth power, so you can say this is the same thing as 3 to the fourth times the square root of 2 to the fourth. Now, 3 to the fourth, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, so that's just going to be 81. And this is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, so you could just multiply that out. And it works out it's the same thing as thinking uh, as the square root of 2 to the 4th. In other words, so you just bring this exponent inside. You get the same thing. Because if we look at it this way, that's just going to be 81 again times the square root. And what's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. And the square root of 16 is what? Just 4, so it's 81 times 4. Now, if we did it like this, there's lots of ways to do this. We could just say that this is 81, but this is 81 times. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. And again, this square root of 2, so I guess we could group them like this. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. And another square root of 2 times square root of 2 is another square root of 4, which is 2, and again, we also get the same thing, 81, and then 2 times 2 is 4, so in each case, we got 81 times 4, so you can work them out different ways, and they work out the same, and 4 times 81, well, 4 times 80 is 320, so 324. So you can work these out various ways, depending on what your pleasure is. Okay, let's try another example. Um, the square root of 18 times the square root of 45. Now, sometimes it's better when you just have numerical problems is just to factor everything and keep them in factored form, especially when you're dealing with square roots. So I can rewrite 18 as the square root of, and I think you know how to factor these things. I don't know if you've done a, sometimes they have a fact tree, there's another way you can start with 18. And how can you get its prime factors? Well, we can divide it by 2, that's a, that's a prime factor. 2 goes in there 9 times, does 2 go to 9? No, but it goes in there 3. I'm sorry, 2 doesn't go to 9, but 3 goes in there 9 3 times. So those are the prime factors, so it's 2 times 3 times 3. 
Now, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18, so that's the same thing as 18. And then we could also do 45. 2 doesn't go into 45, but 3 goes into 45 how many times? 15. 3 goes into 15 five times, so you could also times. And instead of writing 45, I'll write 3 times 3 times 5. And then you could put these all under the same radical. And any time that you have two are the same, you're going to have a perfect square. So I could rewrite this as and 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, and 5. And I can, I can multiply these times each other. I should know that if I have 9 times 9, the square root of 9 times 9 is just 9. But just so you could see it, I could write it as 9 times 9 times 2 times 5. And what's 9 times 9? 81. And what's 2 times 5? 10. And that's the same thing as the square root of 81 times the square root of 10. And the square root of 81 is 9, so it's 9 times the square root of 10. There's a lot of extra steps I did here. You don't need to do all those steps. I'm, you can kind of work these things out, but that's kind of what you're really doing. You're taking all these factors and working them out. You're factoring, finding the prime factors of each number, and then you put them all together, and then you just group them. Every two make a perfect square. 3 times 3 is 9. And then actually 9 times 9 is 81, so that's a perfect square, and we can take the square root of that. That's just 9. So there's lots of ways to do these problems. Um, I guess we could try one more. Well, let's try this one over here. Square root of, well, this is a binomial, so let's try something like this. Now remember, if we have something squared, we're just going to multiply it times itself. This is the safest way. If you remember the structure of a binomial squared, then that would help. But otherwise, you could just rewrite this as Remember, when you square something, you're just multiplying it times itself. And now we can just multiply this out using the FOIL process. First term times first term. So what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? Well, that's just 3. That's the square root of 9, which is 3. And then we have negative. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. That's going to be this. And I'll, I'll just do it over here so you can see this. When you multiply this out, the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. That's the square root of 3 times 5, which is just the square root of 15. So you should be able to work that out. You can see that. The square root of 3 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 3 times 5, which is the square root of 15. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 is just the square root of 15. And then I also have the square root of 5 times the square root of 3, which is also minus the square root of 15. And then what's the square root of 5? What's a negative times a negative? A positive. And the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is just 5. Now notice what happens. 3 plus 5 is 15. Minus, and I've got 1 square root of 5 and 1 square root of 5. That's 2 square root of 5. So minus 2 times the square root of 5. And there you go. So hopefully this will make sense. Again, we use the FOIL method. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. And a negative times a negative is positive. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. And then our outside and our inside terms are the same. Negative the square root of 15. Okay. Hope those make kind of sense.